Hello everyone. For the past few months, we have been going through the Gospel of Luke. So far, we have read miracle stories and parables which convey moral or spiritual lessons. Today's text is about the most essential Christian belief, the resurrection of the body. The Sadducees were one of the prominent Jewish political religious sects of the time of Jesus Christ. They were aristocrats, priests and members of the supreme religious council called the Sanhedrin. They were liberal in political views but conservative in religious matters. They accepted only the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. Unlike the Pharisees and other Jews who believed in the resurrection, life of the death and rewards for the righteous and punishment for the wicked, the Sadducees did not believe in any of them, nor the existence of angels or spirits, let alone the reality of resurrection, since it is not explicitly mentioned in the five books. And they knew Jesus had been teaching about resurrection. One day they approached Jesus and wanted to know about the life after death. As an example, they cited a fictitious story of a woman who married a man who later died. In accordance with the law of Moses, her husband's brother took her as his wife in order to produce a child and continue his dead brother's lineage. But he too died shortly afterwards. This happened with all seven brothers. The Sadducees' question therefore was, at the resurrection, whose wife would she be, since all of them were married to her? Friends, Jesus corrected the Sadducees on two fronts. First, the Sadducees had a far too simplistic view of resurrection. They thought that life after death would be an extension of earthly life. That is to say, that the resurrected people will continue to enjoy all the pleasures, such as marital relationships they had on earth. But Jesus reminded them that resurrection is a gift from God awarded to those who are deemed worthy. Those deemed worthy are no longer subject to death because they are like angels and they are the children of God. Hence, at the resurrection, there will not be any physical relationship with one another, let alone marriage in heaven. Second, to the Sadducees, the resurrection appeared ridiculous because they believed that with death, man's existence came to an end. But Jesus explained the belief in resurrection by quoting their scriptures, the book of Exodus. He reminded them when God had manifested himself to Moses in the burning bush. He identified himself. I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. It means that Moses' ancestors who had died hundreds of years ago were still alive in God. That is to say, the relationship that God had established with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob while they were on earth continued even after death. They are alive in God. Friends, what is the message for us? The fact that the Sadducees denied there is resurrection of the body was nothing new. Long before Jesus' time, a man named Job asked the big question, Can a dead come back to life? The same question remains to this day. Is this life all that there is, or is there life beyond the grave? What would life be like if truly there was life after death? Friends, we cannot bring ourselves to believe in a life beyond death because it is very difficult for us with our limited human intelligence to understand it. I don't think any of us can fully grasp or explain it to others. We can only imagine what it will be like. Some people imagine it as a beautiful place with the endless good times. 
Others imagine it as a place where there will be no sickness, suffering or pain, but only peace and joy. But the ultimate proof that there is resurrection comes from the Lord Jesus himself, from his own victory over death, when he rose from the tomb. After being put to death, Jesus literally physically rose again from the dead, appeared to his disciples, talked to them, dined with them, and performed miracles before he finally ascended to heaven. Friends, the Apostle Paul declares in his first letter to the Corinthians, If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ cannot have been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is without substance. And so is your faith pointless, and you have not, after all, been released from your sins. In addition, those who have fallen asleep in Christ are utterly lost. Yes, as the Apostle Paul tells us, without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there is no such thing as the Christian faith. It is so important that the Church has included it in the profession of faith. We confess every week that we believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Friends, before Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, he ex exclaimed, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Friends, Today, Jesus asks us the same question. Do you believe in the resurrection? Jesus' reply to the Sadducees in today's text is an invitation for us, Christians, to approach the resurrection of the body with a genuine faith. We must believe in it even though we do not understand how it takes place. Jesus affirms that there is a resurrection after which our life will be much different from what we think it will be. He says that we will be transfigured, that everything, our life and our relationship will be changed. We will just be the children of God. We will be angels. We will no longer die. We will never be separated from God again after death. Friends, like Jesus, we too will have a resurrected body. We will be alive in God. Let us all therefore live a life that God deems us worthy of the resurrection and of his kingdom. Amen. God bless you.